Here, the son of the man who originally found the wreckage claims that as a child he actually saw and touched the strange material. I saw his pictures of my dad and Sir yep. Ramey's office floor holding up pieces of a radar target. Yep. But, uh, but look on his face is it all like, you got to be kidding me, this is not what I brought here. Right. But, and I can probably say, that is not what I saw in the kitchen. Okay. Floor. So there, there's a switch removed there. Lee believes this mystery can be solved if he finds some of that wreckage. So, what is he looking for? Oil. Many eyewitnesses claim that much of the wreckage was foil-like with incredible strength. And some pieces could return to their original shape if bent. And some fragments featured strange hieroglyphic markings. There's a lot of foil-like material. It could be uh, almost confused with aluminum wrap of today, but it wasn't that. But the most strange feature was the little beams there. It had little, like, writing on them. Hieroglyphics or um, mathematical in some... Okay. I can uh, recall it like it yesterday. We can find something like that here. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack, I admit, but with this kind of equipment, I think we've got a pretty good chance. Just a tiny piece. I had the spoken gun we need. Break it right open. But on the first day, we see the first signs of a potential problem. That foil will mess the readings. It's... Well, that one could. But you shouldn't be in that zone. You should be over there on multi-zone. Yeah, but as you say, this has got a two-meter radius. I'm two meters over here and I'm reading. Well, work that away way. from him. Work at least two meters away from him. There's just too much right. foil around here for this for this machine to work properly. That's my only issue, the whole thing. Can we talk about this later? Can we talk well, about those chip packets might be there for it, aren't they? I don't think you get a reading from the chip packets. Well, the thing is, you could. Technically, you could on a machine like this get a reading from chip packets. So you're saying we should take the chip packets out of here or put yeah, them in the chili bin? The chip packets out of the quadrant. To ensure there is no further interference, Lee puts the corn chips in the chili bin. How about now? You getting anything now? I'm not picking out anything now. You've got to remember, it's not, a, it's not an exact science. Um, what we're doing here, we're, we're groundbreaking, quite literally, um, with some of the equipment we've got here. Some teething problems with some of it, but just, I'm still positive. You just, just need to, you know, just need to quantify the time of spending, really, and the money. Legend has it that any bodies and wreckage was taken and stored at this very hangar at Roswell Air Base. Back in 1947, this was the base of the 509th Bomber Command, America's nuclear bomb division, and it's long been associated with secrecy and cover-up. Corporal Bill West Jr. was on guard duty at Hangar 84 on the night of July 7, 1947. He claimed to have seen the bodies, three small gray humanoids lying lifeless in children's coffins supplied by this funeral home. He is perhaps the only living person with first-hand knowledge of the account who was prepared to talk to us about the incident. Well, that time, I was with the 509th Bomber Command. We was an atomic command, you remember? Uh, well, we was the ones that dropped them bombs on Japan. I don't like to talk about it, but... It was a long time ago, but uh, on that night, July 7th, 1947, I'll never forget that, sir. Around midnight it was, these uh, trucks come in. So they was obviously expecting them. They just opened up the hangar doors and they just drove right in. I, I, I could see through uh, a window in, into the hangar and they was unloading all sorts of shit off this, this, these trucks, you know, I mean, Bomber Command, we saw broken planes and all sorts of weather balloons, whatever it was. We've seen it. We've seen it. But I ain't never seen anything like that. Tell me about the bodies. Oh, God, about 2 a.m., this ambulance comes in. <sighs> they start to haul these, these bodies out. I thought at first they was just kids, you know, they're just, just kids. They're just, what about f four feet long, I guess. I mean, the skins was great. What you could see, they, they had big eyes and that. No hair. No hair anywhere on them. And, and they ain't got no lips. Just a slit for a mouth, you know. Not, not that they moved or anything, because they were. They, well, I've seen dead bodies before, and they was dead. No, no, no escaping that. They was dead. God damn it, it was sixty years ago, and I can still see them bodies. I can still see them. 
The story began quietly back in 1947, but over 60 years later, all that has changed. This is the annual UFO festival here in Roswell. You know, regardless of what you think happened back here in 1947, it's pretty much become the unofficial capital of the UFO empire. Making it a pretty good place to do a documentary on aliens and, and things like that. And all that attention has been fairly good for business. Well, we're trying to get ready for the UFO festival, you know, it's another year, another dime, another dollar. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? It's great what's happening with the town and people embracing it. And... Oh yeah, fantastic fun, you know. This has been going on, I think this is the 11th, you know, anniversary, so it's it's been real good for us. And... You obviously got in a lot of detail here, I mean, you've got even, you've got things like the original stun guns from the original Star Trek series. I mean, yeah, that's really a stapler. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right, it's a... You probably need, that's probably what you're using to put all those up, oh, yeah. all, the, all the stuff. <sighs> Thanks, mate. Fantastic, appreciate it. Yeah, Lee, take care. The Chamber of Commerce is really proud of this because it put Roswell on the map there, but it kind of detracts from the real meaning of what happened here. So what exactly is the real meeting? We talked to alien expert Don Ray Walton. Don Ray? Tell us about the Roswell incident, 1947. What's your take on that? Well, see, the Roswell ship was meant to reach the United States Capitol. They were going to warn us about 2012. So what's happening in 2012? All these planets line up every once in a while. They kind of hit the jackpot, which is a bad jackpot. And then they stray away from their safety zones in their galaxy. Okay, I'll just speed you up here. You're basically saying there's going to be a cataclysmic event on Earth. It's going to Well, yeah, apart. we had, when we did it May 18th, 1980, all the planets lined up, retro-rocketed us, St. Helens went right up. straight towards Gravity. a giant black hole in the middle of the universe. Okay. We're heading straight for that. So why did the Roswell ship crash? Their own kind shot them down because it, there wasn't no room to bring the humans on board yet. So then the government come in and covered up. When they found out it was about 2012 and the aliens told them there would have been a worldwide panic, the government would have lost all control, and that's why they covered up Roswell. Uncovering the Roswell event will take a high-tech forensic search. Basically what we're doing here is uh, we believe that this is the actual site where the so-called spacecraft came down. Are you going to extend the quadrant at all? Like yeah, yeah, AJ, not to, have done, not to have done this bit. Really, really not comfortable extending the quadrant to have done this bit, okay? Oh, sure, we're going to find some bigger parts down there, but they're going to be deeper. We need to be in the impact zone. We've, that's where the bulk of the stuff's going to be. I guess we've had three days, though, that's what I'm saying, this quadrant. Yeah, we have, we have, but we're going to work this zone till it's done. Then we extend the quadrant then. Then, just before lunch, a possible breakthrough. Okay, we'll map it, we'll work it after lunch, it looks good. Now, this is interesting. Uh, this is something we found early this morning. Um, no, I don't think it's part of the wreckage from the, from the alien craft. I'm um, no expert, but I think it's probably the steering column from a 75 Buick, okay? But it's promising that our gear is picking this kind of stuff up, mainly metallic. Um, so we've got options now. We can either take it back to our labs, have it analyzed further, see if it is, in fact, um, what I think it is. Uh, we could donate it to the, the Royal Museum even, or we could just chug it back where it came from. But, um, it's promising. Coming up, mysterious planet attempt to reveal secrets at this top secret desert facility. And then later, drama in the desert. Was it actually rattlesnake there? Oh. 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 oh, hey mate, come on in. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just a bit of an issue. Um, yes. I'm pretty sure I ordered the king size. Oh, um, yes, this is a king size bed, sir. No, no, mi mini bar. They only really come in the one size, sir. That's why they're called mini bars. Really? Okay. Um, okay, thanks, mate. Thank you. Have your way. Thank you. The infamous Roswell incident. Legend has it that any bodies and wreckage was taken and stored at this very hangar at Roswell Air Base. And it was from here that many eyewitnesses claim to have seen strange wreckage and even bodies. We're standing right outside Hangar 84. Legendary Hangar 84. Where many people claim Alien wreckage was brought in 1947. Where did it go then? Has there been a cover-up? And by who? What, US military in that? They're rhetorical questions. I don't expect you to answer those. I'm going to answer those as the program progresses. By the end of it, we'll know, we'll know that. Lee gets 
back on the tour bus and learns more about the incident and so much more. So this is Hangar 84 where they brought all the debris and also where they brought um, the aliens. Demi Moore was born here in 